What's up guys? Today on Robbie's Reviews, I am in the 2020 Ferrari F8 Tributo. I just want to thank my friend Alex from Elite Auto Design in Miami, Florida for allowing me to take the F8 out today to see what it's like to drive, how it compares to its predecessors, the 488 as well as the 458, um, and show you guys any cool features that it has, and um, honestly just get my opinion on it, as I've never driven the 488, I have driven the 458, both the, uh, the Spider and the Special. Um, however, this new F8 Tributo, even though it's technically a heavy facelift of the 488 and what I've gathered from friends who actually own an F8 as well as articles that I've read online, uh, this car is what the 488 should have been. It is a truly incredible machine and I'm really looking forward to diving into it and showing you guys what it's all about. So let's go check it out. All right guys, here she is, the 2020 Ferrari F8 Tributo. This example was finished in a lovely metallic pearly white over a uh, red interior, full red leather interior with uh, black accenting throughout. You also have the black leather dashboard. And uh, you guys may have noticed that the OEM wheels are no longer on the car. They have been replaced with these amazing uh, bronze or copper colored Vossen forged wheels, which look really nice with these carbon fiber Ferrari center caps, as well as those massive carbon ceramic brakes sitting behind the wheels. Probably some of the biggest brakes in the automotive industry. Now the F8 Tributo is the replacement for the 488 GTB, um, whereas a lot of people were actually expecting a completely new model instead of kind of just a heavy facelift. Ferrari was actually um, very busy developing both their SUV, uh, the Roma, the SF90 Stradale, and several other projects that they have going on. So they really couldn't spare the budget to completely redesign their, uh, I guess you could say entry level mid-engine V8 car. So they took the 488, and they gave it a complete new face, rear end, and uh, kind of updated the interior, which I'll show you that in a little bit. So starting on the hood or uh, trunk section here, uh, instead of just a flat panel that was on the 488, you actually have this air channel that starts just under the front bumper, goes all the way up through here, and then uh, will send air right over the roof through that uh, kind of air channel here. So it's a very cool aerodynamic uh, element here, and really just helps with downforce and keeps the car a lot more planted than the 488 was. It goes all the way through. I don't know if you guys can see that with my hand. And continuing on with the front, you have completely revised headlights. They're LED units. However, where you can actually see the original shape or the uh, indentation that the 488 and even the 458's headlights had, um, the actual lighting element stops really up here instead of the headlight or turn signal going all the way up the uh, front of the car. So it's a unique design that uh, really gives the car a more aggressive look. Honestly, I think the 488 had kind of a playful or smiley face before, but the F8 looks very, very aggressive. Love the headlight design. Love the new front bumper. You have this kind of hexagonal or honeycomb mesh here. You have the uh, front parking sensors, of course, the uh, Ferrari badge there. And the white paint contrasts really well with all the different black accents. And you have kind of this, uh, these chin spoilers that are protruding out of the side here, and it goes neatly underneath the bumper. So overall, really nice design for the front of the F8 Tributo. Now continuing down the side, of course you have those forged Vossens. You notice here you have an LED indicator right on the fender, just like all other Ferrari models have. And uh, probably notice what's missing is the Ferrari shield. That's an option. I think it's like a $1,200 option. Just this car doesn't have it. And if I'm honest, it looks really clean without it, so I don't really mind. Um, virtually the same mirrors from the 488 and of course the Pista as well. And it's funny how a lot of car companies um, like McLaren, Lamborghini, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, they want to hide their door handles, like either under body panels or have them retract inside the car once you close the door. But Ferrari have a cool looking door handle. It's very functional, feels good in the hand. And you don't have to feel around under a body panel to get it open. So nice design there. Um, these kind of side intakes here on the fenders have been a little bit redesigned from the 488. Um, they added this extra, this flap here. And it looks like it's a little wider opening just to allow more air to feed into the uh, engine. And speaking of the engine, sitting right behind the front seats, of course, right in the middle of the car is a rear mid-engine V8 and the engine is a 3.9 liter twin turbocharged V8 that has made it to a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Now this engine was transplanted directly from the 488 Pista and it produces 710 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque. So it's a lot more power than the outgoing model which was the 488 GTB um, and it's pretty cool this time around instead of just a glass cover or a kind of a glass panel over the engine you have a Lexan like shielding or cover here and it's vented and uh, coming to the back here, 
This is where I think the biggest change is. For anybody that knows what the back of the 488 and even the 458 looks like, um, the 488 was basically a facelift of the 458 and both of those cars had uh, two taillights, one on each side. And Ferrari, this year for 2020 for the F8 Tributo, they went back to uh, their quad design, so quad taillights. And I honestly love that they did this because it reminds me of the F430s, the F355s, and all those models. So it's kind of almost like they went back to their roots a little bit, added the quad taillights again, which I love. Um, the 812 Fast has the quad taillights, whereas the F12 had the uh, one taillight on each side. So I like the direction that Ferrari is headed in. And this car sounds absolutely amazing. And don't worry, we'll get some startup and rev clips as well as some uh, launch control or power start footage in a little bit. So uh, up here you have the third brake light that's housed right in this uh, fixed wing. It doesn't move or go up or anything. It's just a fixed spoiler here. And there's actually another little air channel that uh, starts right under the Ferrari badging here. It goes all the way down and you can see it kind of feeds through. Pretty cool. I actually love these very distinctive uh, vents. They're just going under the taillights and they kind of swoop under the spoiler here and then continue all the way down almost to the license plate here or just above the exhaust tips. Very cool touch. Of course, you have the rear parking sensors and the reverse camera. Now, looking at the basic silhouette or the side profile of the F8 Tributo, it is quintessentially Ferrari. It looks very similar to the 488. And when you look at the side profile, a lot of people might get confused and think 488 or even 458, it's that similar. However, the real changes are in the front and rear ends, and there's only minor differences on the side profile of the car. But nonetheless, I think Ferrari did an outstanding job with the design of this car. Um, I think, for one, it looks better than the 488. Not saying the 488 was an ugly car. However, in my opinion, the F8 Tributo just has that special something that was missing from the 488. I don't know if it's, if it's in the front end, if it's just the aggressive looks, it's just, just something about it. But I really, really like over the 488. So it's pretty funny. A lot of cars nowadays have these like innocent little chimes that go off when you uh, close the door with your key in the pocket and the engine running, just to let you know that the vehicle is running and not to go too far or, or walk away. And uh, I've noticed that the F8 Tributo really doesn't want you to leave or go anywhere with the engine running while the, uh, while while the key is in your pocket. So if we open the door here, so key's in our pocket, engine's running, and we're just stepping away for a second, close the door. How funny is that? Full on several blasts of the horn, which is not, it's not a quiet horn either. It's not cute in Italian. It's like a, almost like an American SUV. Just uh, funny that Ferrari would do that. I don't think I've ever seen that on any other car or, or any other Ferrari, especially. So right now we're gonna open up this Lexan engine cover back here, get a closer look at that 3.9 liter twin turbo V8. Opening up the engine cover. It weighs nothing, it's a Lexan. It's like almost like a plastic or a very lightweight glass. You can see there, F8 Tributo, that classic Ferrari uh, oil cap. And there's the engine sitting back there, very, very down low. 3.9 liters, twin turbocharged V8, 710 horsepower, 570 pound-feet, and uh, it's a little stamp or some markings here showing you what the oil you're supposed to use and all the information about the engine. Uh, it's a very neat packaging. It's actually pretty similar to the McLaren 720S, although in this case you can actually see the whole engine instead of just the uh, panel covering the top of the engine. But the turbochargers are way back there. You can see the, uh, the red block there. I mean the uh, intakes, for the uh, classic Ferrari wrinkle red. Um, Looks very nice, nice packaging once again. And yeah, I mean, not much to say. It's a Ferrari engine bay. I've never seen a bad looking one before. So right now we're gonna close this uh, Lexan cover up. It is uh, quite hot from uh, the engine running and also roasting out here in the South Florida sun. And uh, I love all these little like black mesh vents that are, are throughout the car. They're functional, but they also look really cool. All right, real quick, we're gonna take a look at the front trunk or the frunk of the F8 Tributo. You actually have a row of buttons down here. One opens the front trunk, the other's for the gas door. Then you have all your memory seat settings. All right, there we go. As you can see, it's a very generously sized uh, front trunk or frunk. I have my two bags in there. You have the car cover. You have a couple of these uh, Ferrari bags. Actually, one of them is still in its original packaging. And what I love about every Ferrari, um, so if it's a mid-engine V8 Ferrari, you have this plaque of the build sheet of the car. So you have the model, the serial number, personalization, specifications. So the color is Bianco Avis over uh, Rosso Ferrari. And then uh, you have Nero 
152 for the mats and they have all your different options. So adaptive front light system, Rosso Scuderia brake calipers, carbon fiber central bridge, carbon fiber hubcaps, or not hubcaps, but center caps, they call it, the Italians call it a hubcap. Let's see what else you got. The Cavallino stitched on headrest of the horse, sport tailpipe tips, advanced front driving camera. I'll have to check out what that is in a little bit. Um, carbon fiber steering wheel plus LEDs, must have. Parking camera, front and rear parking sensors, white rev counter, love that. It did come with the 20 inch forged diamond wheels. However, like I was saying, we have the Boston forged wheels on it now, 20s. Full electric seats, they're standard um, manual seats. Premium hi-fi system, JBL uh, professional system. And the colored special stitching. And I actually missed it over here, we have the suspension lifter, which I think is like a $5,000 option, but it's a must have, especially here in South Florida. This is a very low nose, and I've already had to use the lifter a couple times today. But uh, it actually goes up really quickly, and there's a button right on the inside for it. You don't have to go through in a menu within a menu, like on McLaren's and some other supercars. And actually here you can see the opening for that uh, air channel. You can see it goes all the way through to the ground. Pretty cool. So let's close it up. Now we're going to step inside the F8 Tributo, check out the interior. So right off the bat you see this gorgeous full red leather interior with the stitched horse. You can see all the options that the plaque was talking about. And actually speaking of the plaque, so this being a rear mid-engine car, the plaque is in the front. But if this was an 812 Superfast or something like that, or a front engine V12, you would have the plaque um, in the actual rear trunk or hatch area. It would be kind of like on the back wall. So a very nice little touch that I don't think any other car company does, at least not as detailed and nice as Ferrari does it. So let's step inside. All right, so we're sitting in the 2020 Ferrari F8 Tributo. Now, for those of you that have ridden in, driven, or even just sat in a 488 GTB or 458, uh, this interior is going to look very familiar to you. However, there are some notable changes that I'm really happy Ferrari did. But uh, before we do that, we're going to start the car up. Just like every other modern Ferrari, you have everything you need on the steering wheel here. So they actually moved the horn. It used to be up here, kind of like uh, where your thumbs would rest, on the actual uh, horn cover. So in the middle of the steering wheel. But you have your revised turn signal controls here, on the left and right. You have your wiper controls, your Manatina dial, which is your mode selector. So you have uh, wet, sport, race, and then CT off, and then ESC off. Uh, you have your wiper controls, you have your voice controls, phone, engine start button of course, uh, suspension mode button here, and then you have your high beams, headlights. So everything you need is on the wheel, and it is a gorgeous steering wheel. This is the optional carbon fiber steering wheel with the LED shift indicators there, which I'll get some footage of in a little bit. Uh, so without further ado, let's start it up. Got the key in our pocket, put on the brake, here we go. You can see those LEDs that lit up at the uh, top the steering wheel. So now we're going to close the door. As the electric steering wheel comes down and uh, the power seats, I have my mine all set with the memory setting. The owner of the car uh, probably has his as number one, so I have it set as number two. And you can see that white rev counter or tachometer looks great. Man, I know that's a turbocharged engine and a lot of people um, really wish that they still did the naturally aspirated V8, but that sounds really good. So right now, go back into race mode. So um, if you, like I was saying earlier, if you recognize anything from this interior, it's probably going to be the gauge cluster most of all. You have these two screens that have been revised. So the right side, you basically have your infotainment controls. And also, before I go any further, I just want to say that the interior of this car, just like a lot of other Ferraris, is very driver centric and while there is an optional passenger display that would be uh, right around the F.A. Tributo badging similar to what's in the GTC4 Luso, the 812 Superfast uh, that is not in this car and you just have uh, the nice carbon fiber trim there um, however even then it would just be a display and you can't actually change any navigation settings or radio or stuff like that so over here you have your infotainment uh, controls so we go to this screen hit OK we can just go home and you can see we have your speedometer. So we just want to click on that, it shows your speedometer. Um, and you, even though you can have a digital readout over here of your speed, you can also show your speedometer over here, or you can go back. Using this uh, rotary knob here, you simply scroll through the options. 
So radio, media, navigation, we click on that. You get a pretty decent sized little map. You can zoom in, all kinds of things. So going back, you have your phone, difference in your vehicle settings here. You have your display, audio, Bluetooth, climate, system info. Nothing crazy. It's not a, not a luxury car by any means. There's no real creature comforts or luxury features. It's just the basics. Ferrari gave you what you needed to function, drive the car, and that's really it. And on this side, of course, you have your uh, digital speedometer. And uh, using these controls over here, you control the left screen. So uh, you can scroll through the gauges, the temp uh, oil and water temperature. You have your uh, fuel gauge, as well as your mile an hour in the bottom. Oil pressure, battery voltage, tire pressure. Right now, the uh, tire pressure light is on, probably because the car has aftermarket wheels and they didn't reset it. Let's see what else we got. It's, that's really about it. Uh, you have your trip info, you have cruise control, all your settings over here. Here are your headlight settings over here for the uh, upgraded LED light system, the uh, adaptive LED headlights. You have your uh, mirror controls. And then on this very, very nicely leather wrapped with contrast stitching on uh, the door panel, you have your uh, door handle here. Let's pull up. And for those of you that are wondering where the window controls are, just like uh, pretty much every Ferrari ever, the, they're down here, they're one touch uh, up and down. And uh, this center stack here, which is also optional carbon fiber, it is fixed, it doesn't move like in some McLaren models, but uh, you have your hazard lights, a Ferrari's version of the launch control, which is called Power Start, which I'm gonna showcase in a little bit. You have your auto mode, and you have reverse. And uh, what's pretty funny is you have two cup holders. However, one is a permanent cup holder and the other cup holder is taken up by uh, the key display. So if I take the key out of my pocket, it actually just gets displayed right there. So while you don't have two cup holders, you do have an area for everyone to look at your key so they know they're in a Ferrari. <laughs> take that out. And continuing up here above the cup holders, you have this little... Uh, bank of buttons here one is for the optional vehicle lifter so you press that and the front says front lift moving vehicle instantly goes up it's a hydraulic system very quickly and uh, it's speed dependent so if you go over a certain speed I think it's 20 miles an hour so it'll go back down and if not you just put it down and then uh, this button in the middle here that's for the parking sensors or parking system and now uh, this one that shows a camera um, doesn't do anything if you just press it and you're in park or neutral in this case we always don't have park so we put our foot in the brake, hit the reverse button right here. The rear view camera comes up and that beeping noise is the parking sensors. Definitely gonna turn that off because that's super annoying. But if we hit the uh, camera button here, you can see it actually changes the, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it'll change the angle of the camera. So it goes to wide angle, narrow, and that's really about it. Um, put the car back in neutral. And to put it in neutral, I have to do simultaneously on the paddles, so bear with me while I hold the camera. So to put the car back in neutral, you just have to pull both paddle shifters simultaneously. These uh, Ferraris don't actually have a uh, park, like some other cars. Um, basically, just if you want to go into drive or first gear, you pull the right paddle, goes into first gear, and then it's in auto from there. Or if you want to just press auto to turn it off, then you can manually shift. But um, that's just the way the Ferrari's always done it. Cars don't really have a park, even though they really could. Um, then you have your electronic park and brake down here. So even though the car says it has a front camera, I'm not exactly sure how to uh, turn that on. I don't know if it just shows up on this screen or this one or what the deal is. So Ferrari doesn't really have an advanced camera system on any of their cars yet. Um, like McLaren and Lamborghinis now have a 360 degree camera, surround view, or I guess you could say, and uh, just more advanced parking systems. And a lot of times these vehicles have horrible blind spots and this car basically has one massive C pillar like the whole back half of the car is just all a B slash C pillar and uh, while the front is pretty good you do have these uh, pretty large hips I guess you could say in the front and where the nose kind of dives down you really don't know where it is half the time so it's nice to it would be nice to have a front camera although on the uh, build sheet or build plaque in the front trunk it does say that there's some uh, front camera I'm just not sure how to access it and uh, something else you guys may have noticed is the revised uh, climate controls. So you no longer have that really outdated, ancient looking uh, system here where it's like the two dials and you have all the, um, the buttons. Just, it looks like it's all over the place. Instead, you have a nice little screen here 
You have your different controls. You have fan speed, uh, recirculator, auto. You can choose the way the air comes out, and you have your temperature. Uh, it's pretty funny that you can't sync it. It's not too zoned, but usually you're able to sync it. But um, nonetheless, it's a nice update. And speaking of updates with the AC, uh, you no longer have those really weird, like very uh, carefully shaped air vents that were on the 488 and the 458. Instead, this time you have uh, what you actually find in like a GTC4 Luso, an 812 Superfast, and even the LaFerrari. These very cool swiveling air vents, they're circular, and there's a cool design in them. Actually looks like the wheel of a car. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. And um, so where the driver gets these two vents that swivel, the passenger does get one really weirdly shaped air vent that kind of uh, molded into the dash. But then on the other side, they get a swiveling air vent right next to the F8 Tributo badging. Very nice. And um, that's about it as far as the interior goes. Like I was saying, it's not really a feature rich interior with a lot of creature comforts and luxury features. Um, it's very driver centric. Everything the driver needs is on the steering wheel as far as operating the vehicle. And then for driver information, um, infotainment and all that, it's just these two screens. The passenger cannot see the screens. Even if this car had the optional display, the passenger display, they would only be able to just see information like navigation, G meter and all that, but it doesn't have it. So honestly, it, you don't even notice it's not there. Um, and as far as the sound system goes, like I was saying earlier, it does have the optional uh, JBL professional sound system. It sounds pretty good. I mean. Sound systems in supercars are never really that crazy. They don't have a lot of space to put speakers and with weight savings in mind They can't just put 30 speakers in a car like you have in the Mercedes S-Class or the new Escalade that I just reviewed um, But nonetheless, it is a really cool interior. You definitely feel like you're in something special I mean, you actually do have some decent storage down here uh, Nice rest for your hand it says Ferrari and you do have some more storage back behind the seats You have a couple inches there with some nets um Headliner is, uh, I'm not sure if this is a op the standard, it's definitely not optional, but it's uh, almost like a raw carbon fiber or some kind of um, weird material. I don't know what it is. It's like a netting, but it's also like very, very hard. And just, it almost looks like the way that they lay or form carbon fiber or even fiberglass. Um, up here, you have your auto start stop off. You have all your LED lighting inside. Um, have your lock button, you some kind of towing mode. And then the uh, leather sun visors is just a uh, place to put maybe your driver's license or registration. There's no mirror or any lighting. Like I said, that's where the weight savings comes in. So that's nice. Um, really do love this uh, carbon fiber steering wheel, especially with these LEDs at the top. So if we give it a couple revs. I just love that. So yeah, this is a very, very special place to be. And uh, honestly, when you're in a Ferrari, you really can't go wrong, no matter what year it is or what model. Ferraris are just special cars, and this 2020 FA Tributo is no exception. All right, guys, so now we're going to go get some startup and rev clips of the FA Tributo, and then we're going to take it out on the road and see what it's like to drive. All right, so right now we're driving the 2020 Ferrari F8 Tributo. Just here on uh, some nice roads in Miami. It's a nice sunny day out. Um, I can unleash the full 710 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque. Um, now, this is not the first Ferrari I've ever driven. Um, I've driven the F12, the GTC4 Luso, the Ferrari 458, but with the exception of the 488. So that's the predecessor of this car, or pre-facelift, you could say. However, I think this car is more than just a facelift. It is really well, it's not a complete new car from the ground up. It basically improved on everything that the 488 did, or you could say it's the 488 turned up to 11. And it really is what the 488 should have been from the start. So I'm gonna do a little pull here. Put it back into auto. So um, that was just a small pull. It was full throttle that was in race mode. Um, the mechanical grip this car has is unreal. I haven't even tried the uh, launch control or the power start yet. 
Um, Got to find a nice straightaway where I can do that. However, um, right off the bat, I mean, this car rides amazing. There's actually a little button on the steering wheel here and it puts the suspension into bumpy road mode and the ride immediately just softened up. I mean, I'm on these pretty bad quality Miami back streets in this uh, neighborhood here. There are some potholes and dips and divots and stuff like that, but the F8 is riding really superbly right now. Um, you can't really complain, but then I press the button again, it goes back into the race mode, stiffens up and it's just so playful. I mean, right now I'm gonna go in a roundabout here. It's just, yeah, it is. This car is so lively. Now I've heard from other people just how amazing this car drives, but it truly is one of those things you just have to experience firsthand. Um, I've heard it compared to the 488 Pista's uh, steering, which is definitely more precise and lively. And you get a more immediate or instantaneous uh, re reaction or result from steering input. All right, here we go. Do one more pull real quick. Actually, I think I can stop and do a power start real quick. Just trying to find a road or a street real quick to do a power start or launch control. Actually, we'll try uh, this one. Eh, no residential streets. Not going to do launch control in a 700 plus horsepower Ferrari in, a, so in the suburbs. So we'll find somewhere. But in the, mean, in the meantime, I mean, I've got the suspension in bumpy road mode. Um, I've heard a lot of people say and also read in some articles that this is like the daily drivable Ferrari. And it's honestly true. Do a little pull here. Yeah, that's, I love the LED indicators, the shift light on the steering wheel, that's an option. Uh, this car is pretty well optioned for what it is. I mean, it's missing a couple things, but I love that it has the electric, uh, for the power seats, they're also heated. Um, just has, a, you know, for what it is, it has, it has a good amount of creature comforts and luxury amenities, I guess you could, you could say. I just love how from light inputs on the throttle, you get the exhaust valves that open up. Bear with me, guys. All right, here we go. Yeah, just the smallest throttle input in this car. The torque buildup is massive. You don't even notice it as turbocharged. I mean, you can hear them. You can hear the turbo blow off sounds. But yeah, it is, it is the, uh, the tire pressure monitor. Car has uh, aftermarket wheels on it, so it's freaking out a little bit, especially from uh, being driven kind of hard. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it handles itself very well. It's comfortable, it's quiet, it's very well insulated in here. And like I was saying before, uh, a lot of people said that this is a Ferrari you can drive every day. And when you're talking about supercars, uh, the first thing that comes to mind isn't daily driving. However, this is one of those cars that I feel I would be comfortable driving every day. Just wanna find somewhere real quick to do a little power start. But yeah, I mean, this steering is just so lively and amazing, it reacts perfectly. Actually, we have it in bumpy road mode still. We'll put the suspension back into race mode. There we go. Downshifts are great. I mean, the car was just in seventh gear cruising at about 35 miles an hour. I mean, you, sometimes you can't even hear the engine. It's very, it's very nice in that sense. You have the seven speed dual clutch, but at the same time, it'll sometimes act like a uh, torque converter where if you're not driving hard, the car will know that it knows to get to the highest available gear. And these paddle shifters are amazing. They're fixed to the column instead of the wheel. So they don't move with the wheel. I love that. And even in like stop and go traffic here, the car is perfectly docile. It's one of those cars that you can enjoy at 50% and also 100%. So if you want to give the car the full beans or just really go all out and test your skills as a driver, the car uh, will let you push yourself and let you push it and it won't make you crash into a tree or a guard or anything like that. It is forgiving. Although if you put it into CT off or ESE off mode and you really push the car, um, also depending on the tires and the road you're on, it could fight back. But uh, nonetheless, it is a forgiving car as long as you know what you're doing. I just love when those exhaust valves open up. Do some manual shifting here. Put it into manual mode. As soon as this guy goes, give it all it's got. This is, uh, this is an incredible car, guys. And I'm not on a racetrack right now or anything. I'm not trying to push it too hard. I'm kind of driving around a residential area, but this car is just really something special. Let's see if I can go straight here. I think this is the perfect opportunity to try a power start or launch control. 
Here we go. Put on the brake. Wow. That honestly just took my breath away. I don't know if, if that came out on camera how violent that was. The car gripped, it just dead hooked. I mean, I'm not sure what tires are on this car, but it's on aftermarket wheels, they forge Vossens, they're nice and light. But yeah, that was, uh, that was one of the most impressive launches that I've, I think I've ever experienced. Yeah, I honestly, I can't get the smile off my face. This car is just unreal. I'm actually gonna do a little U-turn. Car does not make the uh, tightest U-turns. Put it back into auto mode. And after you're done terrorizing the streets, you put it back into auto, put it into uh, sport mode here. The car will always shift up to the highest available gear. So it'll stay, keep the RPMs low. And right now it's just a regular car. Then if we uh, flip it up into race mode, put it back into manual, drop some gears. Wow, guys, honestly speechless. That seven speed dual clutch transmission is just intoxicating. The steering feels unreal. Just everything feels nice and tight. It's really, truly incredible machine. I know it's not that hard to believe that a Ferrari is a great car and it is a supercar after all, it's over $300,000. But at the end of the day, when you actually get to experience these cars for what they are, and really truly get to drive them, um, it's honestly otherworldly. And this has been one hell of an experience. All right, guys, well, that should do it for this review of the 2020 Ferrari F8 Tributo. Once again, I just want to thank my friend Alex from Elite Auto Design here in Miami, Florida, for allowing me to take this beautiful machine out today to see what it's like to drive and to show you guys all of its cool features. See you next time.